Hi there and welcome to another video for the Edexcel Further Pure 1 Math Syllabus. In this video we're going to start the chapter on co coordinate systems and we're going to talk about what parametric form is. Looking at the scheme of work, there's a fair amount we have to do in this chapter and the first thing really we need to get our heads around are the Cartesian equations for uh, a parabola and the parametric equation for a parabola. In order to do that, we need to have an understanding of what Cartesian and parametric means. Right, what is Cartesian form? Well, usually up to now, we've been given functions in the form y is equal to f of x. So y was the subject of the formula, and it was expressed as a function of the variable x. That was called Cartesian form. So, for example, y is equal to x squared plus 3x subtract 1, for example, was a Cartesian form. There are only y's and x's in it. y is equal to 2x plus 1. Even the following is Cartesian. x plus 2 squared plus y subtract 1 squared is equal to 9. Now that's the equation of a circle. But that's still Cartesian form. It only has x's and y's in it. Y doesn't have to be the subject of the formula. We're just used to it in that way. But this equation only has x's, only has y's, and has numbers. So it's fine like that as well. Or even x could be the subject of the formula. x is equal to, say, 4y squared. That's Cartesian as well. I know x is the subject of this formula, but we could easily rearrange this for y to be the subject of that formula. And similarly here, we could make y the subject if we wanted to. So Cartesian usually looks like that, doesn't have to, but the key thing is that we have to have only x's, y's in, in the equation and numbers. Okay? Nothing else. Right, that's Cartesian form. Let's compare this to parametric form. Now, parametric functions are functions when the y and the x coordinates are expressed in terms of a third variable, and we usually use t. And that t is called a parameter. So, x is some function of t, and y is some other function of t. For example, here is a set of uh, parametric equations. x is 2t squared, and y is 4t. So what makes parametric functions different is that the x and the y coordinates are given in terms of some equation of a third parameter, t. Now, why is this helpful to us? Well, let's take a look at an angry bird scenario down here. Uh, you pull the elastic band back, the angry bird uh, gets flown in the air and is trying to hit a target. Now, at any point, um, say at this point here, this bird has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So at any point, it has an x-y-coordinate. How are the x and the y varying? Well, actually, one way of looking at this would be to say, where is that bird after one second? And you would like to, if you had an equation telling you how far across that bird would be after one second and how far up that bird would be after one second, that would be very helpful for you. You could plot where the uh, bird flies. So at any point along here, say the bird's here, if you could have x as a function of time and you could have y as a function of time and you could say substitute in t is 3 there, where's the bird after 3 seconds, it would give you um, tell you exactly how far x across the bird is after 3 seconds and how far up uh, y the bird is after 3 seconds. So having uh, an equation in parametric form would make it very easy to plot the direction that the bird is, is going in over time. So time here, t is, usually stands for time in a lot of the things we're going to deal with. It's very helpful to be able to plot the curve, and see how it changes over time. Right, let's introduce some um, parametric equations. What can we do with these? Now, the first thing we can do with a parametric is we can find the coordinates for different values of t. Here's a parametric set of equations. x is um, some function of t, f of t, 
and y is some other function of t, um, g of t. Now in this case, x is 2t squared and y is 4t. So what? Well, it's quite handy because we can say when t is 0, uh, we can substitute in for x and y, and we can work out that x is 0 and y is 0. And that gives us a point to plot. x uh, 0, y 0, we can plot that point. If we wanted to know what, what t was at 100, it's quite helpful. Substitute 100 in here. 100 times 100 is 10,000. 2 times 10,000 is 20,000. So x would be 20,000 and y would be 400. Again, another pair of coordinates we could plot if we wanted to draw the graph. So the first thing you can do with parametric functions is for any value of t, you can substitute in that t and work out the corresponding x and y that happen at that t or time if, if t stands for time. Right, taking this to the natural progression, what we would like to do is plot this curve. And this is what we're going to do in this example. This is example one for you. The first thing we need to be able to do with parametric functions. We are asked to draw the parametric function we were just dealing with in the previous page between t is negative 4 and t is 4. OK, how might you do that? Well, you're going to set yourself up a table. Simple as that. You're going to set yourself up a table. You're going to call the top uh, item here t. And you're asked between t is negative 4 uh, to 4, so negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then you're going to work out the x and the y values that happen for each of those t. So here I would call this column, uh, this cell x is 2t squared, and I would call this y is 4t. And all I would do is substitute t is negative 4 into this to get the x coordinate, t is negative 4 into this to get the y coordinate. So putting negative 4 in here, if I substitute in that there, I would get 32. Putting negative 4 in there, I would get negative 16. Negative 3 going in there, I would get 18, and I would get negative 12. Doing the same thing along, I'm just going to do it without talking much anymore. I would get 8 and negative 8, 2 and negative 4, 0 and 0, 2 and 4, 8 and 8, 18 and 12, and 32 and 16. You'll notice it was actually um, symmetrical either side of 0. So for negative 1 as t, I got 2 and negative 4. And there was some sort of symmetry because for t is uh, 1, I got 2 and positive 4. They are my set of coordinates. Now what I can do is plot them. So I'll move on to, I'll draw an axis out. Here was uh, the points here, so let's try and draw them. For t is negative 4, I get 32 and negative 16. So x is 32, y is negative 16, somewhere here. Then I get, for negative 3, I get 18 and negative 12. So 18 and negative 12, something like that. Then I get 8 and negative 8, so 8 and negative 8, something like that. 2 and negative 4, so I get well, x is 2, y is negative 4, 2 and negative 4, 0 and 0, there we go, uh, 2 and 4, so 2 and four, uh, 4 somewhere here, 8 and 8 somewhere here, 18 and uh, 12 somewhere here, and uh, 32 and 16 somewhere here. And I have plotted those points. Hopefully you can see this is starting to look like a curve, something like this. Now, I wanted to go through all those points there, but it looks something along those lines, and that is actually called a parabola. So, using this parametric form and for various values of t, I was easily able to plot this parametric curve. Now, I'd like you to try one yourself. And then that's it for this video. So here's an example of one yourself. In 10 seconds, I will show you the answer.
Okay, I drew the graph out for you. That all you had to do was plot on there. Um, hopefully, you label this as t. You label this as x is t plus one. You label this as y is three t squared. And you went from t is negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three. Substituted in, and you would have got something that looks like this. So that would uh, have looked like the graph of that parametric function. And that's it for this video. All we've done so far is introduce the idea of parametric functions or equations. So that is when x and y are given as a function of a third parameter, which we usually call t. And we have seen that by substituting in values of t, we can uh, find pairs of x and y coordinates, plot them, and then that get the graph from the parametric form. Just to consolidate then, I suggest you read pages 41 and 42 and do exercise 3a in the book, questions 1, 2 and 3. Then tune in to the next video where if I was given a parametric equation or a function, I would be able to convert it into a Cartesian form. Thank you for watching.